Hey guys, we're going to start this one off a little different because I want to make sure you watch this through, okay? This episode is a lesson in never giving up. I've seen some pretty terrible things in my time. This took the cake. It's almost sort of miraculous. As a great man once said, uh, I may be used, but baby, I ain't used up. Waylon Jennings. Look, you got to watch. You just got to watch this. I have no words. It's time to do something that uh, I know a lot of you guys have been waiting for, and I have too. It's time to tear into this, uh, the OG 400 here, and see if there's even a possibility of salvaging some or part of this motor. So let's dig in, guys, and I'm sure this is going to be interesting. Let's go ahead and, that's all dirt, what am I doing? It's too cold for me to bust the pressure washer out and I'm still kind of sick. So getting wet seems like a bad idea. So we're just gonna wing it like this and so we're just gonna soak everything down. Maybe take the shop back to it and suck all this dirt off of it. So this is the original 400 out of the Holy Goat and it is a numbers matching engine. The VIN is right there. And it is a base uh, GTO 400, 350 horsepower. Uh, it's got the oil drippers on it. That's how I knew when I bought the car that this was a GTO engine. She's got screw-in studs in the heads. So they're, they're big valve heads. These are number 13 heads. 211, 177 valves. Very good head, 10 and a half to one compression. So even if we can't use anything else, as long as we could salvage these, our time is well spent here. A lot of things on this engine are probably worth quite a bit of money. The intake, the uh, casting number on it will come back to a you know 70 GTO. The uh, distributor even, if we can examine it and see if it's any good, uh, that will come back as 70 GTO. There's some things here that are worth you know a little bit. Which is why I was shocked that nobody bought this car for 200 measly dollars. There's easily probably a thousand dollars worth of stuff on this engine that I can see right now. So let's go ahead and try to vacuum up some of this genuine Texas dust here and see if that, yeah, it's pretty powdery. This will probably do the trick. <laughs> so much dirt on this thing that as I'm vacuuming it it's creating an electrostatic charge and I get zapped every time I touch the engine that's bizarre any of you are science nerds down there uh, tell me why that would even happen that's very strange to me and we'll probably start with the intake work our way down into the rockers get these hoses off pull the distributor off Key note here, always soak the hell out of Pontiac timing covers. I mean soak them. I bet the bolts are already broken off on it. But they are made out of some horrible pop metal, and this one is going to be stuck for sure. But I haven't had one that I didn't break off the bolts in the block with. Now let's start with the bolts I can get to. Oh no, I didn't detorque it. Always keep your uh, bolts well organized. I'm sure this doesn't want to come off. Probably just going to go ahead and go get the pry bar. All right, you're going to be a nice motor. Uh, not a so nice motor. Come on. Oh boy, it's not going to be a nice one. There it goes. This big old oh, sucker off of there. These are definitely original gaskets. It's pretty cool. I don't know if I've ever actually seen those before. But that is a fiber gasket. 
and that GM would have used back then. Very cool. Whenever you're taking apart any old engine, not necessarily one that's in this bad of shape, the other thing to remember, the uh, Pontiac in particular switched to an alloy pop metal aluminum something distributor housing. Uh, what, like 63 or 4? And the issue with that is uh, alloys and iron do not get along. And so whenever they sit and get moisture on them, they basically weld themselves together chemically. And I would be shocked if this doesn't fight us quite a bit. Yep. Saw that one coming a mile away. I don't recommend doing it this way. Oh, I just broke it. Dang, see? It don't take much. Well, that sucks. That was probably worth something, but I wasn't going to use it, so oh well. And now that I've pre-broken it, we can uh, proceed without fear now. That's the good thing about it. Yeah, once you break it, you don't got to worry about it anymore. Now you guys must really think I'm a butcher, huh? As you can see, I got her to where she'll rotate a little bit there. There it goes. Got it out. Thankfully, it didn't do any harm to the block. It just stuck in there. The wear on that uh, gear looks pretty good. This hasn't. This car doesn't have that many miles on it. Something kind of unique to the Pontiacs is the valley pan here. You find a similar kind of deal on an LS engine actually and while a lot of other makes use a the intake gasket as a valley pan or like a Chevy where it doesn't have anything at all Pontiac actually has this stamped piece right here that takes its own gasket it's a separate piece uh, keeping the oil separate from the intake and basically it leads to a cooler intake charge a little more dense air better fuel mixture better economy you know a little more power that way um, so that's one cool thing about a Pontiac that they have the foresight to do that before a lot of others hopefully we can get this off without completely destroying it let's look inside of this for the first time probably since it was assembled oh my god uh, well that's what you call bad uh oh this is the worst I've ever seen in my life. Um, none of this is going to come out. I can tell you that right now. Holy cow. Alright, well, I'm going to hit this with the shop vac. Clean it up a little bit. Then we'll pull off the drip covers, the rockers. We'll just start soaking everything in here. Well, let's zip these rocker oiler cover thingies out. Come on, get it. Come on now. There we go. Now these aren't worth a whole lot, but they're good to keep around for another engine. Sandblast them, get them cleaned up. They'd be good to use. They actually do serve a purpose. They'll really help the top end oiling out. I don't know if they make enough PB Blaster to use on this, but, uh, well, let's try. But I strongly suspect that, uh, None of this is just going to come out willingly. We may have to go borrow a torch set or... I hesitate to say bring it to a machine shop because they're just going to laugh at me. Low mileage. One owner. Frequent oil changes. Now we can go ahead and try to pop the rockers out of it. Honestly, could probably reuse them. I managed to get all that out without too much drama but you got to check this out so I got all the rockers off and uh, honestly they're probably salvageable um, if we want to and we might look at this I've never seen this before 
Look at that push rod has a hole rotted in it. This one's almost there. I'm not feeling real good about trying to salvage this puppy, but uh, hopefully we can salvage the heads. Let's lower our expectations and just say, yeah, let's salvage the heads. Yeah, let's see if the heads will come off. Huh, still got oil on it. That's a good sign. It's always one. Get my semi-automatic ratchet wrench here. Oh boy. That did the trick. All right, guys, well, I haven't done the other side yet, but let's go ahead and pop this one off. Before you do this, ever, always make sure you got all the bolts out, you know. I've forgotten them before with pretty catastrophic results. Huh. It's like it's stuck for some reason. Doing this is kind of a no-no, but desperate times and all that, you know. There it goes. Huh. Yep. Huh. Okay, so this is going to sound stupid, but uh, that's not as bad as I had imagined. That's definitely a factory head gasket, for sure. You can still see shiny metal in these cylinders. In here, this is the worst one, obviously. And, you know, time will tell once we get in here and really start tearing it apart. But, I have to see what the other side looks like, but that's a good, that's a good sign. The head, kind of similar, I mean... You know, it's trashed. This valve is hung open. Kind of makes me wonder if something wasn't up there, you know. But, I mean, like, that chamber's fine because the valves were closed on it. I bet these could be reworked, too. I bet there's nothing wrong with them. We'll get it started with a little PB in there just to maybe give us a chance of popping them out. And we'll go ahead and hit all this again, too, because that's really more of a concern than anything. Just got this side off and it looks better than the other side I mean at a glance again it's still got good cylinder wall here there's like no ring ridge at all I mean, this is a this was a pretty low mile car uh, that's the one that the spark plug was missing out of and I haven't looked deep into that yet but we'll clean that out you, you see there's a carbon build up here a little oil not that bad this head over here, I shoot, I'd probably clean it up and lap them and run it. It doesn't look that bad. Here's a swap meet tip for you. If you're looking at Pontiac cylinder heads, same thing goes for good small block Chevy heads. If they're a big valve head, just to help you eyeball them, if they're a 211, 177, you should just be able to fit your thumbnail in between the intake and exhaust valve and just barely be able to fit it in there because they really they cram those valves in there big time pontiac always had a good flowing cylinder head that's a big part of it i don't know what manner of creature makes that kind of nest but uh it needs to go bye bye all right well that hole definitely leaves some to be desired it's pretty bad that was all mud dauber nest by the way but let's soak it down. You know what's kind of weird is how oily these other cylinders are. Like these walls, these walls are fine. Like this one is runnable, I would call it. But it's not bad. This one, maybe a hone, would probably bring it around. And it's almost like somebody filled the cylinders with oil before the car was parked. Uh, kind of weird, but... I don't know why you would do that and then shoot the car to pieces, but hey, whatever. See what we got in the lower end of it. That's probably where the worst of it will be. Well, let's pop the balancer off. One cool thing about the Pontiacs is there you don't need a gear puller to get these off. Usually they just slide right off. Although I'm sure this one might give me a little bit of trouble. Damn, slid right off. That's cool. Again, if you look on the back side of these, you can see where they are elastomastrically bonded or whatever uh, with rubber. 
and what happens a lot of times on these old cars if you find you can't time it or something like that usually this rubber has let go and the outer ring of the damper has slid that happens on almost all of them over time however this one looks to be in really good shape so that's a reusable part right there all right let's try to save this timing cover looks to be in pretty good shape so if we could save that again any potential build in the future that would save us about a hundred bucks nice I did not expect those to come out like that almost no rust on the threads all right all right have to flip it over so we can get to the bottom of that we gotta flip it over anyhow so no biggie uh oh what <laughs> Really? You gotta love that hazardous freight quality. Genius. We'll just modify it. Okay, now it should roll over. Ooh, not gonna pee anything, huh? Alright, well that's one good thing about buying something full of dirt, I guess. See, when things don't work for you, just persuade them to work. These Pontiacs, you got four bolts from the oil pan to the timing cover. But uh, unlike a Chevy, you can pop these off without pulling the whole pan. That's one good thing about them doing a cam swap. You don't got to worry about that lip seal on the front. All right, let's see if you're kidding. It just popped right off. I did not expect that at all. You know, I don't think there's anything wrong with these. Probably could have reused them. No, these are fine. These are definitely going in the parts stash for sure. These are pricey. Seven bucks a side. Okay, let's go ahead and yank the pan. This might take some doing. All right, so I got to do some archaeological digging here and uh So I skipped ahead a little here cuz I was fighting a bolt back here. And uh <laughs> Uh, 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 holy crap. Uh, this bolt back here has now become pretty slow. On my priorities. Wow. This is unreal. I've never seen anything like this. So this is all mud. But these pieces here... That's the windage tray. Pontiacs have a windage tray that bolt to the, you know, couple of the main caps in here. Oh my gosh. Never would, I mean, I knew it would be bad, but I just wasn't prepared for this. You guys know me. I usually have something to say. But this... I'm just dumbfounded. I've been sitting here for 10 minutes just kind of look, staring at it going, hmm. Well, so much for that. You know, when I was a kid, I was always fascinated by shipwrecks, Titanic, things like that. I reckon that's probably what the engines on the Titanic look like, don't you? We got nowhere to go but deeper in, so let's clean it up as best we can and, uh, Shoot, I mean, you know, uh, see if there's anything left to save. The cylinder walls may be still salvageable. It's going to cost a lot of money in machine work. I may have to start a GoFundMe, but let's see what's going on first. Yep. You know, it's got a little sludge in it. You know, I might have skipped an oil change or four. Maybe they used vinegar as oil. I don't, I just don't understand this. I still haven't quite grasped what's going. 
That was the oil pump pickup. He just disintegrated in my hand. Oh my gosh. I'm sorry, like you guys know, I'm not like one of those reaction YouTubers like, whoa, oh no, look at that, no. I am legitimately dumbfounded here. I, I don't even know what to do. I, I, that's some kind of fiber or something. I, Wow. Oh, it's all mouse nest. Oh. If this thing could be saved, that would prove once and for all that you can't kill a Pontiac. Well, I feel about, you know, 2% better about this now that I've done that. And let's just go ahead and soak the hell out of all of this. Obviously, there was a lot of water in this thing. And now down in Texas, you know, it, I don't know how cold does it get down there in western Texas. Does it get cold enough to freeze and break something? You gotta figure with all the water that was in here, you would think that it'd be kind of obvious if it would have broken, like it'd be a big crack. But not necessarily, I suppose. Boy, if, if this thing could be saved, it sure earned it. That's for sure. Oop. The oil pump come out. We'll save the drive shaft off of it. That might be able to be salvaged. Those two bolts out. And on the threads, they look okay. Now, will the cap actually come off? That's... A... Oh, yeah, it will. Oh my gosh. This looks fine. It still has oil in it. Let's see if we can't get this bearing off just for giggles. Well, see, you know how they say uh, you don't want to see copper? We really don't want to see this. <laughs> GM 400, that is... These are factory bearings it's never been into. Before we go too much further here, I'm just gonna take the whiz wheel here, <coughs> clean up all these bolt heads, try to get to the rod caps that I can to perhaps facilitate removal. <laughs> are gonna be a trick holy crap that's gonna be fun also this one is gonna be very fun look at that oh. Oh. all right one one is better than none remember guys false hope is still hope covered in oil we might stand a chance on getting that one. I'm going to try hammering a 7 8 onto this 15 16 bolt. Always use your Harbor Freight sockets for this kind of stuff. Lifetime warranty and they don't ask questions. Yeah. Oh, damn. Oh boy. We did it. Look at all that anisease on there still. That is amazing that that is still around on it. Crazy. Oh, there it goes. That one's actually not that bad. Bizarrely. There's like no scoring in that bearing at all. This was probably a pretty dang good engine. Well, I don't know. Let's dig in further. I'm going to throw you on the fast forward and I'm going to try to work my way through this. We'll take off everything we can. I don't know. I don't know. My plans are falling apart here. I mean, I don't know what I expected, but holy crap, this is bad.
I say the odds of this turning over are uh, overwhelmingly not going to happen. But we got to try something. If we can just get it to move an inch. Oh, no way, man. God, I just got to be able to get this one last rod bolt out. Then we could, you know, theoretically get the crank out of here. And of course, the one that that's stuck in, well, it doesn't look like a bad cylinder, so... Oh, wrong one. Never mind, the one that that's stuck in looks like a really bad cylinder. So... I don't know. Kind of a bitch, because this uh, crank could be salvaged, and I really don't want to just go beating on it. Let me try to get this other main cap off. I already cracked it beating on it, so... I'm assuming that's, I mean, yeah, you're not supposed to use a sledgehammer taking an inch apart. I think, uh, you know, being at the bottom of the ocean probably hasn't done the metallurgy any favors in those, and they crack pretty easy. So I'm going to try to bust that off. Then maybe it'll turn, because all the other rod caps are off. Maybe we can tap on the bottoms of the rods to try to, like this piston moved here. If we could get a couple of them off of there, the more we can give, the more we can free up, the more chance we got of just getting this thing just a, just a hair. Finally got that number four main off of there. Man, it actually looks okay inside. But you can see I cracked it right there around the bolt, and it goes pretty much all the way down. I really didn't hit it that hard. It's probably better to find out now, because I bet if you torqued that to spec, I bet it would break. That's okay, that can be replaced. Now let's continue to see if we can get this thing tearing, touring, tor, tear, torn down, torn down. Well, I'm back out here again, and somehow it just, it hasn't fixed itself. Oh, right. No, but we've been, I let it soak in the PB. And I think it did actually help some. Let's take a look. I don't really remember, but I think this looks better than it did last time. I bet you guys didn't know that I was a chemist. <laughs> Neither did I. Well, anyway, let's mix this stuff together. So what I got going on here is this dirty salt lick tub here. I got about, oh, a little less than half of that five gallon bucket of water. And then I've got all the cleaning vinegar that Walmart had to offer. And what you want to do is when you're cleaning rust, vinegar works pretty good. Now I've researched all kinds of ways to do this. Uh, all sorts of fancy formulas and electrosalysis and you know, I'm just not smart enough for that. So I'm going to stick with what I know, which is something I've never done before. But I know that vinegar is pretty dang acidic. And uh, it ought to clean up stuff pretty good. So before we go hauling into the engine block there, I, let's test this on some of the smaller pieces, see how it works. Then I might invest it enough to like fill a barrel and put that engine block in it. I know one thing, and that's that as far as on the scale of the pH goes, vinegar is pretty spicy. So what you want to do is dilute it. You can't, I mean, if you poured this in straight, it would probably eat it real well, but I, I reckon you'd probably risk hurting the iron itself, you know? So uh, dilute it about half, right? Probably one to one. And uh, then I got some dish soap here, and I figured I'd mix that in. I don't really know why, but I just assumed that it might give that rust something to cling on to and, you know, get off of the metal, maybe. Maybe not, but I got the orange one, because, you know, oranges. I guess we'll try a head first. Let's do this one. This one's the worst of the two. It's a lot of dirt in that head. I probably ought to rinse these off first. In fact, I think I'll do that. Actually, after just rinsing these off, they cleaned up halfway decent. But 
We'll still throw them in there. I just want to experiment. Like, I know that if I drop these off, they'll take them. They'll get hot tanked and everything. But, uh, just to see how this works. That's our best proof of concept we got. Looks like our maximum capacity of this is one cylinder head. I'm going to mix everything in this bucket, then pour it in there. Just to have some hope of keeping it fairly even. God, this stinks. Yeah, if we're anywhere near right, it should be about, what, three of these? Alright, then I'm going to put some soap in here. Maybe it'll knock down some of that disgusting smell, too. Then we'll stir it with, you know, this. See if this is enough to cover it. If not, we'll make more. Something in there. It's it's doing something. Something's happening. Unfortunately, I slept most of my way through high school, so chemistry and whatnot didn't really uh, take hold. While I was grabbing stuff, I wanted to point something out to you guys. One of the things that lends me to believe this is a very low mileage engine is that is the original nylon timing gear. And there's not a chip in it. That is pretty much unheard of, as far as I'm aware. These were known to fail, you know, very early, like 60,000, you know? I mean, very early. Uh, it was a real problem, especially for Pontiac. So, the fact that that is in that good a shape, like good enough to put back in, that should tell you quite a bit. I noticed that a couple of these pistons acted like they were going to come out. Well, there's an original Holy Goat piston. Now we got number two's companion out of the hole. Now I can get a wrench on him to get that rod cap off. And then I got five pistons out of it. But after we get this off, I'm hoping we can get just lift the crank out of it. If I gotta leave a piston or two in there, that's okay. All right, check this out. There we go. There we go. Hell yeah. All right. You might admire my breaker bar here. It's a Chinesium half inch breaker bar with half of a 12 gauge double barrel shotgun stuck on the end of it. All right. Should be able to just lift her out now. More or less. Might have to roll it out. <laughs> Baby. You guys would probably think I'm looking at a different engine here. Look at these freaking journals. They look like the day it was made. I mean, they're spotless. That one's still got the bearing in it, so does this, but holy crap. We'll knock those bearings out and see what they look like. This thing could be saved. I think this cylinder is going to need a sleeve, no doubt about it, but but Oh man, we'll see. We'll see how it turns out. Right, let's roll these last two bearings out of here. No, not that one. Sorry, that's my bad. But this one. Look at that. I could put bearings right back in this if. <laughs> oh God, do I try it? Emery cloth the crank. Slam some bearings in here. See if it runs. It's already proved itself to be immortal. Well, let's keep on soaking these last three pistons we got. I want to get those out of there. The lifter bores are going to be a, a problem, too. Those are kind of fragile in a Pontiac. This really goes to show you 
Don't give up on anything. No matter how bad it looks, no matter how bad things seem, don't give up. There's always a way around it. And whether they've tried to shoot you or bury you alive and drown you, and you can still come back and fight another day. Well, I'm trying to get the cam out here. And I tossed a pair of vice grips on it to try to wiggle it, and obviously it's not moving. So I'm just gonna hit these lifters with the whiz wheel here. That's what I call a stuck lifter. <laughs> Let's try to work these lifters out very carefully then. And then we can knock them out the bottom if we can just get them to stick up a little bit. I know this is probably getting old by now, but uh, this is what 90% of this job has been, is just soak it, and soak it, soak it, keep soaking it, soak it some more, keep soaking it. Find all the oil passages, like right there, that feeds that middle cam bearing there. Freaking fill that thing up. Well, I reckon while we're trying to wait on them lifters to soak, let's see if we can get these other pistons out. My favorite engine to work on in the world, because I get to use 4x4 blocks and sledgehammers. They still seem a little bit stiff, so flip her over. Get some lube on the back side of them. Can't imagine why they'd be stuck. I mean, come on. Try to get this as clean as I could. This is going to need a sleeve for sure. This is the worst one of the whole bunch. Uh, I mean, it has large pieces missing out of it. Although, honestly, they're so high up, I bet you'd never even know. But we'll see what a machine shop says. But it will not come out. So it ain't coming out this way. It's not going to happen. Good thing is, is I think. This one has enough room on the bottom side to drive out the bottom. And uh, that may be what we have to try to do. Okay, for whatever reason, it will not come out the bottom of this cylinder. Which makes sense. The piston doesn't spend any time at the bottom of the cylinder. So it's smaller now. At least we got it down here. I cleaned up the bore uh, all the way down. It really doesn't have any excuse now to just shoot out of there. I am not asking. I can't say I've ever done this before. I can already hear the guy down there in the comments saying, shouldn't have knocked the piston out that way. Now the ring is caught on something. You are correct. However, friend, I would invite you to take on something like this. When, you, when things aren't working, you just gotta try every damn thing. You know what I mean? Listen here, you honored cuss. You come on out of there, for God's sake. By the way, kids, don't ever strike a hammer with a hammer. Come on. Come on. Come on. Where are we at? Uh, almost to the top. If I get this out, I ain't, I ain't doing nothing else for the rest of the night. I'll get back to you when I get the damn thing out of there. Victory, mother! Victory is mine. Wow. I busted the piston up. <laughs> Look at the pitting on that thing. Well, it came out here for the next day after a pretty much full 24 hours of soaking on this. And she's still a little stuck on a on a lifter in there, but the cam is moving free. I was kind of hoping we could use the cam to pop the lifters, but that's okay. So let's try to walk the cam out. I'm just going to rotate it as much as I can. 
I know it's not going to go all the way. Be nice to work these lifters out just a bit more. But I'm scared to I'm scared to pull. I'd rather I would rather push the lifters out. And just like that, three hours later, there is one immortal Pontiac bump stick. I'm not throwing this away. Uh, this is definitely getting a place on the wall of shame. But it was getting hung up on one of these bearings in here. It doesn't matter. At least it's out. Plus, we saved ourselves probably an hour of machine labor, which isn't cheap. So, you know, if we saved 100 bucks by doing that, that's totally worth that. So let's see if we can drive these lifters out the bottom and then uh, then we are done with stripping the block down. Uh, we could pull the freeze plugs, but uh, I mean pretty minor stuff after this, stuff that won't be a problem. All right, now to drive the lifters out, a lot of times on a worn engine, you are better off driving them out the bottom because the bottoms of the lifter will, uh, the bottom of the lifter will mushroom and then they don't really want to come out the top. We don't have that problem here, but I'm assuming, just kind of guessing, they're gonna go at the bottom easier. Yep, just like that. I'll be damned if there ain't oil inside of that lifter board. You gotta be kidding me. <laughs> A little hone and these will hopefully just come right around. That is too cool, oh my God awesome all right i got 14 out of the 16 out these two are being a little bugger we'll try to clean the bores with a little brake clean and well they changed the nozzle on this and i'm using free all now this stuff has worked really good actually it was on sale at o'reilly it's the only reason i bought it it's now seven cans of penetrating lube i've used but well worth the money i would say well, let's check on our science experiment. Uh, pretty much looks the same. Oh, hey. Looky there, huh? Ha ha! That's cool. Look at that. That's like perfect. Let's see what the head looks like. I figured it'd take a little scrubbing, you know. That's no biggie. So oh, here's a main cap. Looks like new. I mean, definitely need some more. A little bit of scrubbing, but it's doable. It just comes right off. You could literally do this. I mean, I'm gonna have them work just because, but, ow, holy crap, that burns. Whoa, that burns. Hey guys, if you do this, that burns. I mean, if nothing else, it makes a hell of a cleaning solution. Look at that. It's pretty cool. I'm not even going to bother with the other one, though. Now that we know the engine is probably good, uh, it's all going to the machine shop, getting hot tanked anyway. We'll probably take the heads apart in the next episode, though, because this one has taken a lot longer than I thought. I kind of figured we'd pop the heads off and it would be junk, but uh, shame on me, I guess. Well, all the lifters are out. Pretty clean, you know? So, this is pretty much where we're gonna stop. I still gotta pull this off and uh, the oil filter adapter. Still gotta pop the freeze plugs out, cam plug out. Anything you do will save them time, which will save you money. So, that's uh, the way to go about any kind of machine work ever. But uh, before we, before I wrap this thing up totally, I'm definitely going to oil the cylinders down so they don't rust any worse than they are. And uh, just try to preserve what we got already. I got one question for you. Do you think, uh, you know, some little LS engine or some modern fuel injected thing, do you think that they could be drowned and shot and beaten, drug and buried alive and then just get right back up say is that all you got? I don't reckon so. That right there is a fine crafted piece of American machinery.
and damn it, it shows it. They just don't make them like they used to. I think that's gonna do it for this one. We're gonna have to send that off to a machine shop and definitely have it magnafluxed uh, and see if it's, you know, make sure there's no hidden cracks in there, which it's always possible. And especially with this one, we need to take that precaution. Well, here's the thing, here's why that is even somewhat savable. You see, it's a Pontiac. And old Pontiacs never die. So anyway, that's going to do it for this one, guys. I want you guys to remember to hit that like and subscribe and hit the bell thing. Make sure you're getting the notifications when I post a video. Uh, if you're not, you could be missing out and not even know. Thanks to Roadkill Customs. You guys go check that out if you give a chance. Roadkillcustoms.com Sponsor and overall life coach of mine. Next time we'll probably dig into the cylinder heads. We got more work to do to this yet. More than I thought I actually had to do. So let's keep the ball rolling. Might as well. I want to get it as done as, it, done, as done can be before we really start on anything else. So thanks again guys. Y'all take it easy. My God, look at this disgusting mess. I have to clean the shop again.